experience within the recruitment industry. We're seeing this cultural shift between the culture of companies and what are the employees' expectations. So how are you seeing this link with the recruitment strategy of today? And perhaps are there any special perks that employees are looking at having in order to you know, retain their jobs and being more confident within that particular structure? No, so it's, it's a bit of a complex question in today's world because you have different uh, pools of talent. And as maybe 50 years ago, it was more monolithic in terms of levers, we call them levers. Um, today, there are the, the traditionalists, so those who respond to things like salary, career growth, etc. But then there are a whole other diverse group who have different levers. There's some commonality around flexibility. As Zach said, with young people, startups are incredibly interesting. Uh, I think gone are the days when people are looking for a job for life, as we all know. Uh, instead, they look at uh, companies, they look to join companies where they can resonate with the objective of the company, how they contribute to society, and how they can grow and express themselves. I think sort of. So, in answer to your question, it's not an easy one. Uh, and today, you need to make sure that as a company, you're attracting the traditional pools, but you also resonate with the newer and younger generations. When it comes to offering opportunities to young people in the sense that we have to make sure that we create the right environment so people will actually move or experience you know, the educational aspect, but yeah. also experience the hands-on. Today, more than ever, skills are changing very, very fast. So, whereas maybe before getting promotions was enough, today people want to make sure that their skills don't become redundant. So, you need to make sure that they're upskilling in the right areas in order for them to be viable long term. And as we all know, our careers are going to be extremely long, right? So, and more so going forward. Definitely, and I think this also came through during the COVID-19 pandemic where we have seen a shift in the way we work. So all of a sudden, working from home, remote working, it became the norm. And that also affected how we interact with the team. In terms of flexibility, because obviously it is the buzzword today, right? But, and we've all talked about how important it is. In fact, it helps people have, find better work-life balance, etc. From the other end, we can't forget about productivity, right? Because we, yeah, we need to be viable. So I think flex, the whole flexibility discussion is also about giving more responsibility, more accountability, more ownership to people. So they need to embrace the flexibility, but also the increased accountability. Yeah. Uh, and only in doing that can we move forward and become more flexible and give people what they want. In relation to all this, um, yesterday we announced that a small enterprise we are working on a startup framework where we are looking at how we can improve the lives of entrepreneurs, of startups, and therefore attracting and retaining talent is one of them. You have referred to flexibility, making employees feel part of the startup. So what do you think, for example, of ideas such as employee stock awards? Or for example, yesterday we have announced um, the Malta Startup Residency Programme. Do you feel that such programmes by government would entice, you know, uh, the attraction of talent and the retention of talent? I don't know who would like to go on this. Um, no, definitely. I think sort of what we're trying to do here, and I think Malta has been quite successful in this in the past, is building a cluster, right? So a cluster is all about attracting talent at the end of the day. There are, there's talent in entrepreneurs, there's talent in engineers. So yes, I think the, any way to facilitate them coming to the island and creating that cluster, which obviously makes it sticky, is very favorable. Obviously you need, like everything else, you need to sort of differentiate your offering from what other countries are doing. And clearly other countries are trying to do the exact same thing. So we need to make sure we have the, the US fees in place. Any last words of advice that you would be happy to share with startups? I will start with you, Matthew. No, I think uh, sort of Malta is a great place to start. I don't want, to, I don't want this, this to become a pitch, but it is a great place to start. We started here. Yeah, I was living overseas for quite a few years as a, as a younger man. 
And I came back to Malta, started the company, and it's been very good to us. Uh, it's nimble, it's small, it's entrepreneurial. People love coming here because of the quality of life. You know, every country has their pros and cons, but I think when it comes to our positioning, it's strong. So, uh, whoever is thinking about starting a company here, I'd wish them good luck, and I, I think you're in the right place.